Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now in today's video I will be continuing my invasive fish series, but this episode's a little bit different, as I'll be going through four problem invasive fish and one very invasive crustacean. And we'll start off in fish tanks worldwide, as we have the goldfish. Now the goldfish is probably one of the most popular and well-known fish in the world, and as humans first started keeping them around 2000 years ago in China, they've had plenty of time to enter ecosystems where they don't belong. And the goldfish is a colour variant of a Eurasian carp species, but as we've been keeping them for over 2000 years, people have been able to modify them into many different colours and shapes. But these so called fancy goldfish aren't really a problem invasive species as they've been modified so much that they have little to no chance of surviving in the wild. But the more natural shaped goldfish can really become a problem, because as they're related to the common carp, they can cause just as much damage, although they are a little easier to spot in a river or lake. But they don't get quite as large as the common carp, reaching a maximum size of around 35 centimetres or 14 inches. And as this species can live in near freezing water and can live to up to 40 years old, they are very hard fish to get rid of. And the main problem in the goldfish invasion is how easy they are to obtain, as goldfish are extremely cheap and are sometimes even given out as prizes at fairs. And this doesn't just lead to fish being mistreated, but it also means a lot of people were stuck with the fish that they have no idea how to care for. And this leads to a lot of people releasing them into the wild, where they can soon take over the ecosystem. And as they are so similar to the common carp, they create the same issues, as they're known to decrease the water quality by churning up the substrate while looking for food, and they also uproot aquatic plants and outcompete native species. And this isn't just bad news for the native plants and animals, as eradicating gold goldfish costs millions of dollars worldwide. And as it's such a big problem today, one of the best ways to tackle it is to better educate people why it's such a bad idea to release these fish into the wild. And globally, the aquarium trade has contributed to a third of the world's worst aquatic invasive species. So really, some of the blame should fall on the aquarium trade, as well as irresponsible fish keepers. So even though it's one of the hobby's favourite fish, it's still one of the worst invasive species worldwide. But for our next fish, we'll move over to the fresh waters of Eurasia, as we have the rough. Now this small fish is in the same family as the perch, and is really a smaller, better camouflaged version of the perch. As they can reach a maximum size of around 25 centimetres or 9.8 inches, but most specimens are a lot smaller than this. And in its native range it normally feeds on zooplankton, aquatic insects, and insect larvae. But as this is quite a small, very peaceful fish, it's quite strange to think of it as invasive. But it has become a problem in the Great Lakes of America. The invasion of the ruff was first noticed in the 1980s, and it's thought that they made their way over to America via the ballast water of ships. But as this is such a small species, it won't produce date on the native species of the Great Lakes, but rather competes with them and eats their eggs. Because as it's closely related to the yellow perch, they feed on the same food items and have quickly become rivals. But as the rough has a faster growth rate and reproductive rate, they can multiply a lot quicker than the yellow perch. And in the Great Lakes, the rough has proven to be very adaptable, being found in many different habitats and many different temperature ranges. But as the predators of the Great Lakes are very similar to its native predators, it is possible to limit their numbers by introducing more predators but this could also upset the predator-prey balance in the whole of the Great Lakes ecosystem. So scientists have suggested using the alarm pheromones of the rough to keep them away from other lakes. So even though this species doesn't look like an invader, it has proved to be one. But for our next species, we'll be staying in the waters of North America as we have the signal crayfish. Now if you've ever watched this channel before, you would have seen this species. Because for a slight part of my intro, there's a very old video of me holding a signal crayfish. And if you can't tell by the accent, I live in the UK, where this crustacean is not native, and this individual was caught at a local river where they have become a real problem. And in its native USA, this species is kept in check by large bass and sunfish species that are more than happy to take them out. But today they are a problem invasive species in many parts of Europe and Japan, and in these waters there are a lot less large predatory fish. So this species has been able to spread pretty much unchecked. And the story of the signal crayfish invasion into Europe dates back all the way to 1907, as in this time there was a crayfish plague which was caused by water mould, and this damaged stocks of native European crayfish, which was a big problem as they were considered a delicacy. And as the signal crayfish occupied a similar ecological niche as the native crayfish, it was imported into many parts of Europe in the 1960s. 
but these crayfish escaped from their fish farms and have spread throughout most of Europe as they can now be found in 25 countries where they do not belong. And as this crayfish will eat almost anything, such as detritus, aquatic plants, small invertebrates, fish and eat in each other, there was really nothing holding them back. And what makes this even worse is the signal crayfish is actually a carrier of the crayfish plague. So not only was it out competing the native species, it was also killing them off with the plague. As in the UK, since the invasion of the signal crayfish, the native white clawed crayfish's numbers have decreased by over 90% in some English counties. And this is left them vulnerable to extinction and as they also feed on fish and fish eggs they've had a negative effect on the fish species too and as they're so tolerant of poor water quality and pollution they're almost impossible to get rid of and if you ever see one outside its native range you should definitely try and remove it from the water so although one of them is in my intro they really shouldn't be here but for our next species we'll be heading over to the Atlantic Caribbean and Indian Oceans as we have the Cobia now this species is a very popular fish with anglers as they both taste very nice and put up a great fight and as they can reach lengths of up to 2 meters or 78 inches, it really is quite a hard fish to reel in. And because of its long slender body shape, it's often confused with sharks or remoras. And although it is a completely different species, their closest living relative is the remora. And in some ways they do live a very similar lifestyle, as they're known to follow sharks, hoping for an easy meal. But they are a bit more independent than the remoras, as they can be very aggressive predators, feeding on crustaceans, squid and other fish. And the story of this species becoming invasive is a very recent one because as they're such a popular food fish they are stocked in many aquaculture farms but in August 2015 a large number of young cobia escaped from offshore cages in Ecuador and since then they have been sighted in the Colombian and Panamanian Pacific coast indicating that they have spread very rapidly and as they're such a large and agile fish they have very few predators in their native range let alone in an ecosystem where they don't belong as the dolphin fish is known to prey on juveniles and only really the short fin mako sharks go after adults and today it appears to be moving up north into the central and eastern pacific ocean where it's never been seen before and as the eggs of this fish float among plankton on ocean currents they are capable of spreading very widely and as this problem only started six years ago we're yet to see the full consequences of their escape and hopefully we won't have another lionfish situation on our hands but for our final species we'll move back up to the freshwaters of north america as we have the black bullhead now the black bullhead is one of the 45 species of catfish living in north America and is a mid-sized catfish reaching a maximum size of around 60 centimeters or 24 inches long. And like many other catfish species, it will eat most things that it can fit in its mouth, from grains to other plant matter, insects, dead or living fish, and crustaceans. And this excessive diet would make them a massive problem in most ecosystems. But as there are much larger, more aggressive catfish in North America, their numbers can be kept under control. But today they are a problem invasive species over large parts of Europe. As although Europe has some very large catfish of its own, it's quite hard for them to deal with the spread of the black bullheads, as not only can they live in waters with a very low dissolved oxygen content, but they can also live in turbid, very warm waters, and in some cases even brackish waters. And as they have spines on their dorsal and pectoral fins, they can be a very hard prey item to tackle for some fish. And this species is also a very good parent, as they're known to guard their eggs, chasing off any other predator that comes too close. And as there aren't many other fish in European waters that do this, they do have an advantage when it comes to reproducing. But if their populations get any larger in Europe, it'll be almost impossible to get rid of them. But that's about it for this video. If you know of any more problem invasive species, then let me know down in the comments below. But thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.